Hey, everyone. Um, yeah, so I put things in containers all day. Um, I work for Docker. Um, day to day, that includes um, reviewing pull requests, reading some shitty code, and um, adding new features to the Docker engine. Also reading some good code, but more shitty than good. <laughs> Um, I'm a huge fan of Golang. Um, it's my second favorite language, actually, to Bash, um, but I'm not going to be talking about Bash today. Um, obviously, we use Go at Docker um, all the time. I could go into like so many details about how much we love it, how I think the text template package is like designed perfectly in every way, um, but I'm not. Uh, I'm actually going to instead tell you three different stories about um, things that we've experienced in Go um, at Docker. There's um, one story that involves something that we were doing wrong, one that's more of an anecdote, and then another one that's so crazy that I don't think we would ever do it, but I'm still going to talk about it anyways. So here we go. <laughs> Dubbed this talk the Docker Trail, kind of like the Oregon Trail, and then I realized that's like a super American game, and here I am in Europe. So if you do not know what the Oregon Trail is, it's like this 80s game, you should Google it. It's pretty fun. Um, people die in various ways, so that's what we're going to do with each story. So yeah, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so the first one involves static binaries, which hopefully some of you know. Uh, Docker is actually known for the fact that um, we distribute um, as a static binary, and it's actually really nice because it's just one thing, you can SCP it onto your server and you're done. Um, or just curl it and you're there. Um, so this one is uh, you have died of dysentery. Here's some facts about what we do with static binaries at Docker. Um, we actually used to use uh, compile time variables for, um, for uh, injecting the git commit SHA, uh, the version. And also this like very interesting I am static variable. Um, so the thing with this I am static variable is that it is a Boolean. As you can tell, this is like some very interesting LD flag code. And uh, we had recently upgraded to Go uh, 1.4. This was, I think, like months and months and months ago. Um, and we noticed that like, some people would send PRs uh, to the Docker repo, and they would automatically fail with this I am static being false, which is weird because that's something that they don't actually change when they submit a PR. And some would be OK, and they would have it as true, which is you know, what we pass hard-coded in like that. Um, so you know, me, uh, Tianan, Arno, who gave a talk, a lightning talk, and um, Michael Crosby were all sitting around trying to reproduce this in a way that we could give it to the Go team and be like, what is happening? Um, and the problem with uh, problems that we run into with Go um, are very, very odd. Um, and it usually comes down to the fact that uh, we have to ask them to almost like, yeah, this only happens on ours and we cannot reproduce it anywhere else. Because we tried for an entire day to come up with a small reproduction case of like compiling a binary, passing, compile time bars and getting different results every single time. So we're like, shit, what do we do? Um, and I ended up drawing the short straw somehow, and I had to open the issue on the Go repo. And um, they were actually really awesome, and of course get back to us like right away, because I don't know, they're really nice people, <laughs> even though our issues are weird. Um, <laughs> and it turns out, um, after all this time, um, you know, Docker had been around for a year and a half then, um, and we had been doing this for that year and a half, compiling this way. Um, it turns out that uh, one of the people on the Go core team told us that you cannot pass uh, a Boolean as a compile time variable. It needs to only be a string. And what was happening was it was taking the first byte of that, and every time it compiled, either the byte was one or a zero, and it was just like a crapshoot. Like maybe if you put a magnet next to your like hard drive, it would change. So um, we were like, wow, we're, can't believe that was happening. Um, super lucky that that never happened like right when we bumped the version and did a release because God only knows we would have then released these like binaries that didn't think they were static even though they were. 
Um, and this code is actually called, um, it's called in the way that the binary would have failed um, because it's looking for Docker init, which is how we re-exec the exec driver for Docker. So um, you would have like started the Docker daemon and it would have just been like, no, I'm not a static binary and I don't know where Docker init is. Um, so thankfully we found this earlier and I, I could say that we didn't die of dysentery, but it's too funny we did. Um, and so, yeah, that's one of my favorite experiences <laughs> with um, opening an issue on the Go repo and like kind of trying to de debug something super crazy. Um, so the second thing, this is more of an anecdote, and it's kind of funny because I thought of this cool pun. Um, <laughs> so a double fork, um, and this one is, the death here is a grandchild died while fording the river, and you'll understand in a second when <laughs> I explain, but um, we actually double fork the container process and exec process um, so that those processes' grandchildren are um, orphaned and then they can be reaped accordingly. Um, so it's kind of timely <laughs> and nice. And then the third one is something that we recently um, ran into, um, but it was more like, an adventure. Um, so this one's died of cholera. <laughs> um, yeah, so this was like a few weeks ago. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever written Go with Seago, um, but yeah, it's fun times. Um, and going back to the fact that we love static binaries, um, I was working on helping Notary um, add in a um, library P for uh, PKCS 11. And um, the interesting thing with that library is that it actually calls a DL open on a NIT. Um, and we've had like other vendored things where it called a DL open and um, like I made a patch to Go SQLite 3 to put that into a different build flag so we avoided it and could still compile um, statically without like warnings um, from LD. Um, but PKCS 11 is doing it literally on a NIT because you're passing it the um, dynamic library that it wants to use functions from. So I'm like, well, I am very particular about installing things on my host, and obviously I still want a static binary. I don't want to have to install like some s dynamic libraries just so that I can get this to load. And I'm like, there has to be another way. So I'm reading the LD man pages, you know, for fun. Everybody does that. And <laughs> there is this like almost I want to say that it's undocumented, but it is in there. It's just very, very well hidden. And it's, um, it talks about, you know, actually LD, uh, DL opening yourself. So <laughs> it sounds really weird. Um, but yeah, so I was like, well, we should try this because, you know, I don't know. I really don't want to have to have a dynamic binary and I love static binaries. And everyone else was like, uh, you're insane. <laughs> but I decided to try it anyways. Um, the cool thing about DL open is that you can actually pull, pass it a null, and that is the same as like the handle that it will get from the DL open will be to itself. Um, so usually that uh, variable there where the null is would be like some SO um, file. But if you pass a null, it will DL open itself, which seems super sketch and weird, but it's actually really cool. And I ended up like putting this into a um, small uh, like project on GitHub where I just like added two um, <laughs> C files where one is trying to um, have like a square root of a number and another one is just like typing out hello world and a like name that you pass it. Um, so these things get called down here in the main. Um, it's just, just calling out to these C files that I compiled separately. Um, and one is hello, and that's like the symbol for that um, dynamic library. And then one is square root, which is the symbol exported for that dynamic library. And actually, after I had um, compiled this like MacGyver, because we named it the MacGyver of DL opening, um, you can tell like with NM, it's like how to check uh, symbols on a binary, um, that the symbols were actually exported correctly. Um, and even 
in our build uh, command. I am passing like link mode external. Um, these extra LD flags are um, one for debug. The whole archive actually makes sure that um, everything that you pass will be exported um, as a symbol because usually the compiler is trying to do all these like nice things where it's like if you're not going to call it, it's not going to put it into the final binary. Um, but since it doesn't know that we're going to call it because it's on DL open, you have to be like, hey, just put everything in there. I don't care. Um, export dynamic actually makes the symbols um, exported so that you can DL open yourself, um, which that was a very, very small comment in the man pages. Um, and then you can actually turn back off no whole archive for the rest of the binary so that it will be smart, um, which is really nice. And I actually wish that you could do that for export dynamic too, but you can't, and it's kind of a bummer. Um, so yeah, compiling with that and passing the object files, um, it works, you get the symbols, and you can actually deal open yourself. So I'm like thinking about this and I'm like, in the past, and actually that same day I had to open another issue on Go because we were trying, we compile um, in interesting ways. Uh, so when we cross compile the Windows static binary, we use, um, we compile it on a Linux, but we actually pass the compiler as Ming GW, um, which is like the Windows C compiler. And we had like a problem on Go 1.5 with it. But I was thinking, I just wanted to see Dave Cheney's face if this ever broke and he'd be like, you're deal opening yourself. Um, and I was like, we have to do it just for that very reason. Because honestly, if it did break, I would, I would be like, yeah, we're, we should not be doing this. <laughs> I was actually surprised I worked in the first place. But um, yeah, there's no way that we're ever going to use this in code, by the way. I just thought it was super cool. Um, <laughs> I might use it to compile a binary for myself from time to time, but that's, that's a separate story. <laughs> um, I don't think we should ever distribute something like that. But yeah, so um, these were like my three favorite Go stories. Um, and it sounds almost um, negative, but I do really love the fact that like no matter what time or like no matter what the issue entails, um, they always respond super quickly. And I think it's like a great testament to the Go community in general. Um, we've never had an issue where um, we like couldn't do anything. Um, it's always like a workaround and it's, I mean, I think Go is like one of the greatest languages, second to Bash. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't think there's a Bash conference. <laughs> so yeah, that was <laughs> just about all I had. And um, thanks for going on the Docker trail. <laughs>